Week 2 NFL Picks with Uzi. Is this real life? Is this real life? Did you see what my Vikings did to New York last week? Vinkel, the hitman, Sam Darnold, JJ, Aaron Jones. We got a full squad, people. Nobody's stopping us right now. Bring on the Niners. I guarantee you we beat them by 10 points. Especially with CMC out, we're definitely beating them. Like I previously said, this is our year. Skull! First game of the week, we have the Bills and Dolphins going at it. Tyreek Hill has getting away from the cop speed. Shout out Gus Johnson. That is one angry Dolphin. He's going to have 200 yards and three TDs against the Bills secondary. That is one angry Dolphin. I bet he's feeling like Tony Montana and Scarface right now. He wants all the smoke. Give me Miami winning by 30 points over Buffalo. Next game, we have the Patriots and Seahawks going at it. New England surprised me. I was not familiar with their game. Even though they beat the Bengals by six points, they still beat a team with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Burrow all active. What does that say about this team? The future is bright. Bill Belichick's absence was damn near unnoticeable. Defense looks dangerous. Offense is decent with Bursette leading. The Seahawks are also looking fierce with Geno Smith surprising the hell out of me. Did you see that 30-yard touchdown run he had against the Broncos? I had no idea he knew how to use his legs. Now, this is going to be a tough matchup between two solid teams, but I'm giving the dub to the Patriots by three points. Next game, we have the Commanders and Giants clashing. We all seen what happened to the Giants on national television in the hands of the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, they got absolutely cream pie. Couldn't even score a touchdown. Danny Dimes is not looking like Danny Dimes. He's looking like Daniel Stephen Jones III. Tommy DeVito needs to start. He needs to start if the Giants want to have a chance, a slight chance in winning this game. Now, the Commanders are also pretty terrible. Very terrible, I should say. Losing by 20 points against the Bucks last week. I understand Jaden is a rookie who needs some time to develop. I understand that, so I kind of do see him having a great day against a team like the Giants. So give me Washington winning by seven. Next game, we have the Chargers and Panthers going at it. The Panthers season is officially over. Pack your bags. Go home, Carolina. Nobody can save you. Not Bryce Young. Not Adam Thielen. Not Miles Sanders. Not even that old country boy, Xavier Lee Getty, can save this team at this point. I tried to help the team. I just couldn't do it. These boys tried for real. Ain't no saving these boys. It's over with. That was my that was my Lee Getty impression. Was that pretty good? Was that pretty good? Huh? Huh? Give me the Chargers winning by 20 points. Next game is a great one. Saints and Cowboys bumping heads. Oh, this is a great one. The Saints completely murked the Panthers and embarrassed those boys in 4K. Damn near 50 points on their head top. Now, will they be able to do the same against the Cowboys? I don't think so. I don't think so. The Cowboys usually always start off the season red hot. And in the midterm is when they start showing their true colors. Again, I don't like how they're still not utilizing their rookies. Give Deuce Vaughn the ball. How many times I got to tell him? It's just stupid. Why draft a guy and not use him at all? I got Dallas barely winning by three points. Next game, we have the Colts and Packers going at it. Colts didn't look too bad against the Texans last week, but Anthony Richardson is still not very impressive. Well, he had 200 yards. Hey, man, he went 9 for 19. 9 for 19. That's terrible. He has great receivers, but he needs to be more accurate with the passes. Now, the Packers just lost Jordan Love, which is a shame. Second to the last play, and the Dirty Birdies decide to injure the man. I actually thought it was a clean play, but Packers fans believe it was a dirty tackle. I don't think the Packers will do well, especially with Jordan Love being out. Give me the Colts winning by seven. I'd rather have a Packers fan play quarterback instead of Malik Willis. That dude sucks. Next up, we got the Browns and Jags going at it. The Jags looked great last week with Terrence Lawrence. Could have easily beaten Miami if Tyreek was inactive. Now, the Browns looked horrible last week. Have you seen Deshaun Watson's stats? This man went 24 for 45, 170 yards, a TD, and two picks. Get this man off the field right now. I understand you may not have the best of receivers, but I'm telling you right now, Cleveland, you better get rid of him because I guarantee you the same Deshaun Watson you watched against Dallas is the same Deshaun Watson you'll get for the rest of the season. Give me the Jags winning by 10. Next up, we got the Jets and Titans going at it. Aaron Rodgers didn't look too bad against the Niners, but you can tell he's missing something. He's missing something. I don't know what it is, but he's missing something. Get that man some help. Now, this week is an easy game for Rodgers, but he's going to have to tighten up and get more comfortable out there with his new squad. Now, the Titans are simply trash. Will Levis, you better pack your Levi's 
penny loafers and comic books because by week five, you'll be out of a job, pal. You'll be out of a job. Give me the Jets winning by 10. Next game, we have the Bucks and Lions facing off. The Bucks looked immaculate last week against the Commanders. Baker, the chef, Mayfield with almost 300 yards, four TDs, finally some good QB stats. Now the Lions also looked crazy last week. Jared Goff throwing missiles, David Montgomery looking like Marshawn Lynch, Jamison Williams, welcome to the NFL. 121 yards on five receptions, this kid's going to be special. Very, very, very tough matchup, but I'm giving this one to Motown. I got the Lions winning by seven. Next game, we got the Raiders and Ravens going at it. Easiest pick of the week, folks. Give me Baltimore, Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry running all over the Raiders. 41-7 to is my prediction. These bastards scored 10 points against the Chargers, and they think they have a slight chance of winning over the Ravens? Let's be realistic over here. Next game, we have a solid divisional matchup between the Cards and Rams. Kyler Murray looked like a possessed hamster last week running all over the field. Unfortunately, he did fall short in defeating the Bills, but he looked sharp. Now the Rams, they looked phantasmagorical. I don't even know what that means. Stafford threw for 300 yards. King Cooper Cup with over 100 yards. And Kyron Williams didn't look too bad. I have a feeling that it's going to be a shootout. With the Rams stealing the win 31-28. to Next game, we got the Bengals and Chiefs going at it. Jamar Chase, Burrow, and T. Higgins were all active. And they still found a way to lose the game? Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I got Kansas City Winning over Cincinnati by seven points. Next up, we got the Steelers and Broncos going at it. Russell Wilson is riding the bench, ladies and gentlemen. That's not right. Hear me out. Justin Fields needs to play running back. Russell Wilson as the quarterback. How do you like that? These are two superstars that both need to be on the field at the same time. And Justin looks a lot more like a running back than a QB. So why not have him in the backfield? Because we all know he can run the rock way better than half the running backs in the National Football League. They got to make it happen. Anyways, I'm putting the Steelers over the Broncos because I simply don't trust Bo Nix. I mean, I wouldn't trust that man to watch my pet rock. Give me Pittsburgh winning by 10. Last game on Sunday, we have the Bears and Texans clashing. Is Caleb Williams overrated? 14 for 29. 93 yards. Yuck! That is not good whatsoever, especially against a team like Tennessee. No, it was his first game, so I got to cut the man some slack. But I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Caleb Williams is going to complete a pass against the Texans secondary. Give me Houston, winning by 10. Final game of the week, we have the Falcons and Eagles going at it. Hey, New York, do you see what happens when you give Saquon a decent line? Good things happen. It's exciting to see what Barkley's doing out there in Philly. He's definitely not washed. He's not washed like we all thought he was. He's not washed. The Falcons, on the other hand, got Kirk Cousins, a man we spat out. See, the Vikings knew it was time to let this man go. A very smart decision by Kwesi, because I think it was apparent that Mr. Kirko Cousins is sadly washed up. Give me the Eagles embarrassing ATL on primetime television. And there you have it, week two, NFL Picks with Uzi.